Director of Policy and Communications for the Delaware State Senate Republican Caucus. And welcome back to another weekly wrap-up video, this being week five of the Delaware General Assembly. I am joined again here with Senator Brian Pettyjohn from the 19th District. Senator, how are you? I'm doing great. Good to see you again. So, Senator, there were a number of bills heard this week, both in committee and on the floor mm -hmm. of the Senate, uh, most of which weren't too controversial, but one I wanted to touch on and follow up on that we discussed in last week's video, that being Senate Bill 15. Mm -hmm. Uh, the $15 minimum wage. It was right. heard in committee on Wednesday, the Senate Labor Committee, and then voted on uh, Thursday, mm -hmm. heard on the floor by the entire Senate. Um, I'm sure you were able to listen to the Senate Labor Committee and listen to the testimony offered by uh, the small business leaders and nonprofit uh, leaders as well. What, what was your reaction to their public comments? Uh, yeah, I was able to, to listen to a, a good amount of the uh, testimony of the Senate Labor Committee on Wednesday. What struck me uh, probably the most was the fact that small business owners really are, are worried about how they're going to be able to continue their business with a $15 an hour minimum wage. And, you know, as I said in some of my comments uh, when we voted on this measure, you know, my concern is not so much as the large corporations, you know, they can move things around, they can probably handle this without that much of a problem. My real concern is with Delaware small business owners right now. You know, there, we're still at capacity limits in, in many of those businesses. Um, you know, they have taken loans, they've taken grants in order to just stay afloat. Now granted, this uh, first step of it doesn't take place until January of 2022. Uh, it, it's still, you know, we don't know what the picture is going to be come January, if we're gonna be in a, in a much better place uh, fiscally, if businesses are going to be back open, if there's going to be another shutdown in the fall, there's a lot of unknowns. So to place this additional expense, uh, significant expense, on businesses not knowing where they're going to be in, in this uh, situation that we're in right now, uh, I think is, is very unfair uh, to our small business owners, a, a lot of them family businesses here in Delaware, uh, that really that they just, they just can't afford that right now. And you mentioned this in last week's uh, video, but a lot of the, many of the nonprofit leaders that spoke yesterday, they, they discussed that um, the, the, the donations mm -hmm. that typically come from uh, just everyday constituents has been dry, obviously, right. just because of the circumstances around the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, what would you say to them? as they obviously rely 100%, many of which anyway, rely 100% on small dollar donations from um, our constituents. You know, my, my comment to them is that, you know, I know it's going to be tough on them, uh, but as, the, as many of them said during the committee hearings, um, they're gonna have to find that money somewhere. Uh, so there's a lot of things that could happen. They could cut their services, they could cut the people that help provide those services, uh, or they could come to the state for help. Uh, you know, like you said, a lot of the, the outside donations that they have been receiving aren't coming, there, aren't coming into them anymore. Uh, and that's really the, the sign of the economy. We had that same thing happen uh, back in the, uh, the early 2000s, uh, you know, when we had that, that economic downturn that we had. Uh, you know, charitable giving goes down during those times. Uh, people kind of keep on to their money a little bit more or their income gets reduced and they're not able to do as much charitable giving. Uh, you know, my, my response to the, to the nonprofits that, that have an issue with this, it was simply make sure your voice is heard again and emphasize it when this bill goes over to the House. Well, thank you, Senator, again for the explanation for Senate Bill 15, getting your reaction on that bill. Um, as you said, it, the first leg of it obviously doesn't go into effect until January 1st. 2022 of the coming year. So obviously something to keep an eye on is mm -hmm. the economic situation hopefully improves by then. Uh, but moving on, I wanted to talk about actually a bill for uh, two bills rather from Senator Lawson okay. within our caucus. The first being Senate Substitute 1 for Senate Bill 47. And of course that, that relates to the discarding of yard waste. Mm -hmm on a roadway. Yeah. Um, and, and that was a great bill from Senator Lawson. Um, 
many times we hear from people that ride motorcycles uh, on, our, on our Delaware roadways or even bicycles uh, that with people putting, you know, people going through and, and mowing and blowing that, uh, those clippings out to the road, it creates a hazard for them. Uh, you know, wet grass is almost like ice when you're riding uh, on, a, on a bicycle or a motorcycle, especially around a curve. Uh, there's times that you don't see it until you're right on it, and you know, as you're turning as well, uh, it's, it's, very, it's a very dangerous situation. There have been fatalities caused by uh, motorcycle uh, riders hitting that and losing control of, of their bikes. So this is, this is a great bill. A lot of municipalities uh, do this anyway, not necessarily for the, the traffic safety reason, uh, but because it clogs storm drains. Uh, so you know, this is done in a lot of places already, and uh, this, was a, this was a great bill that garnered bipartisan support uh, for that, that common sense safety or public safety measure. Passing unanimously. Passing actually. unanimously, yes. Yep, so that, that's one to keep an eye out on. Mm -hmm. It'll be heard in, in next week or in the coming weeks in Over one the of house. the House committees. Mm -hmm. uh, yep. Absolutely, and the second one though was a bit more controversial mm -hmm. that Senator Lawson also introduced, but you were a co-sponsor on, okay. that being Senate Bill 58. Okay. Uh, yeah. Kind of run us through through that piece of legislation, why why it was important. All right, so Senate Bill 58, and there I, I got a lot of uh, communications from constituents on Senate Bill 58. Um, under current Delaware law, uh, the state can order uh, isolation. Um, they can order forced vaccinations on certain people in a public health emergency. Uh, this bill would prohibit the state from doing that for this COVID-19 uh, state of or health state of emergency or, or health emergency that we're currently in right now. Um, a lot of people don't realize that the state has, uh, through our statutes, that much power. Um, there were there were even some people that thought that this bill gave the state that power because they didn't believe the state already had it. Uh, so you know, part of this was communication, but for the constituents that did know what was going on and understood it. Um, you know, really, it, it, was, it was a wide spectrum of, uh, of people from the political spectrum that were calling me saying, no, we don't want the government to be able to force us to do, uh, you know, the vaccination because, you know, we don't trust it or, you know, I want to do it when I want to do it, not when the, the state tells me to do it. Uh, a number of reasons. Um, you know, they were worried about uh, adverse reactions because they had reactions to other vaccines. Uh, you know, people had their own reason for not supporting the government telling them that they had to have a vaccine. Um, not to say that they didn't want the vaccine at some point in time, but they just didn't want, the, they don't want the, the state having that right to, uh, to, to do that to individuals here in, in Delaware. So obviously, Senator, that was heard in the executive committee, mm -hmm. which you are a member of. That's correct. Um, what was the reaction and I guess the ultimate outcome of, of those committee hearings? Um, there were a number of speakers. I think there were over 20 speakers uh, that spoke in opposition to it. Everybody that signed up from the public spoke in opposition to this bill. Uh, I believe the only, the only witness that was brought in that spoke in favor was, was Dr. Rate, mm. uh, our Director of Public Health, uh, was the only uh, voice in there that, that said that they supported that bill in terms of, of witnesses. Uh, unfortunately, that bill did not get signed out of committee. Uh, in the Senate, we have a process where, uh, after a bill is considered, is considered in committee, uh, the, the senators decide whether or not they want to sign, in, in this situation now virtually sign, the backer of the bill. Uh, it needs a majority of the members in order to move from committee to be heard on the floor. And I believe with this committee there are seven uh, members. So it needed a majority of those to be able to move out of committee. It only received two signatures uh, on there from Senator Hawker and myself. Uh, the other members of the executive committee chose not to sign this bill out of committee. So uh, unlike the House when a bill is, is voted down in committee, um, that the, this bill is currently still in committee uh, and, and could, it could technically be signed out of committee later on this General Assembly, uh, although that is unlikely. Do you believe there are any constitutional concerns with how the current statute is written? And would this bill had alleviated some of those concerns? Um, I think that the, uh, some of the comments that were given during the testimony were that based on some previous Supreme Court decisions, 
uh, early in the 20th century that uh, this would be, uh, the, the, the current practice would be uh, okay. Um, however, you know, that's a very old decision and, you know, I'm sure with new Supreme Courts and, and with, with uh, different things that have happened since, you know, the, uh, the 1900s, that uh, if that was brought before the Supreme Court, they, they may overturn that decision. You know, that's, that's, a, that's a legal question uh, that's best left to the attorneys and the courts to decide, uh, but uh, we are in a different time now than we were then. So Senator wanted to wrap up this video in similar fashion to that we did last week, that mm -hmm. being with a bill of yours. Okay. Uh, this week, Senate Bill 20. Okay. Uh, which related to parking for persons uh, with disabilities. Mm -hmm. um, what does this bill do? Okay, uh, well, in a lot of cases, this came from a, a constituent concern. Um, riding around, you know, our towns, our shopping centers, a lot of times you're going to see that um, a lot of the disabled parking spots are filled. Um, you know, and, and, you, and you see people with the, with the placards that are trying to go around trying to find a parking space. Um, and a lot of our, our side streets, our main streets, uh, adjacent to those parking spaces, you'll find short-term metered parking or 30-minute, one-hour, two-hour maximum uh, parking. Uh, so what this will do, this will kind of give some more parking options for those, uh, for those individuals. Uh, it will allow them to, uh, to park in one of those signed spaces, uh, whether it's a 30-minute, hour, two hour, whatever that limit is, uh, for an unlimited amount of time. And for a metered spot, uh, it'll allow them to have at least an hour worth of time there, uh, regardless if it's, a, if it's a 15 minute or 30 minute parking at that meter. Uh, really just to give them the opportunity to be able to you know, get out of their vehicle, do whatever business they have to do, and, and then get back and not have to worry about beating that meter or beating that clock uh, you know, for, for an hour's worth of parking. Now, have you gotten much reaction from the advocates in the disability community? I have. Um, very supportive of this, of this measure. Uh, I was able to add a couple of co-sponsors on the floor uh, to this bill today. Uh, but it's something that, um, you know, a, a, a lot of us that don't deal with those things every day really don't know about. Uh, but, it's a, but it's a very real problem uh, for a lot of our individuals uh, who have disabilities. So this is something to help them out. Uh, you know, in speaking with uh, some of the other parties that are interested in it, uh, Delaware League of Local Governments, because uh, a lot of times when you're talking about times parking spots, they're the ones that, that established right. that. Uh, they're in support of, of this as well. Uh, anything we can do to help that, uh, our disabled community. Well, very good, Senator. Um, so on that note, thank you for yeah. taking your time out of your busy day. Absolutely. Uh, but again, thank you to everyone viewing this video, all of our constituents. Um, for all the feedback that you've offered from last week and the other videos that we've done. Um, again, we want to hear from you. Can't stress that enough, mm -hmm. right? We want everyone to be engaged. So be sure to leave a comment in the comment section down below about issues that you feel uh, that are important to you that you would like us to discuss and possibly bring forth in legislation. Um, again, we work for you right, the senators, the staff here in Legislative Hall. Uh, so anything we can do to help you guys out, be sure to let us know. But again, thank you and see you next week. Thank you.